For the past three months in Puerto Penasco, Mexico, we grinded, sanded, fared, fiberglassed, repaired, and rebuilt. We shed blood and tears and sweated our butts off as we worked day and night to chase a dream. Our goal? To get our 40-year-old sailboat ready to cross the Pacific Ocean. The time has come to splash and we were beyond nervous. All of our long days in the boatyard come down to this moment right here. How are you feeling? Great. Let's go in the water. Are you nervous? No. Feeling good about it? No. <laughs> What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> we sink. The worst that can happen is we sink or they drop us. <laughs> so many possibilities. Or they drop the boat on us. Oh, wow. That's dark. You asked for the worst. What's the best? The best thing that could happen is we put the boat in the water, everything's perfect, everything works. And we go over to the dock, everything turns on, no problems. Then we have sundowners with our friends. And then we have sundowners with our friends, but that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Wishful thinking. The cost for our 40 foot monohull in the yard was 250 US dollars per month. All paid? paid. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Feeling pretty anxious. There's so many things that can go wrong. Uh, so we just hope we did everything right. Behind me here is what we call the skateboard. And it's a self-propelled mover that's pretty narrow and it can slide under a monohull, pick it up, and then pull it in. And that's how they're able to pack the monohulls in right next to each other like this. First, we'll go on this, we'll finish painting, and then they'll transfer us to the travel lift, and that's what will drop us in the water. So here in Puerto Penasco, the tides are pretty extreme. They can be up to 18 or 20 feet. And at the haul out slip, that means you can pretty much only launch boats at high tide because at low tide, this is what it looks like. It's essentially dry in the corners and there's a foot of water in the middle. But this water is gonna come up today and we gotta time it right and they'll put us in when the water's high. One life is in the skateboard. <laughs> Woohoo! Brooke is just going around painting under the pads where we did a quick sanding. And we'll let that dry, have a little leftover pizza for lunch, and then come back and put a second coat on all those spots. And then we'll be ready to go and we'll just be waiting for them to come get us and take us to the water. All right, well, the guys are here, ready to transport us with the skateboard across the street to the big lift. And you guys, I'm super nervous. <laughs> um, I can't believe that it's been, who oh man, it's been a long time since One Life has been on the water. And I'm so excited that we're so close. We're so close to being back and uh, having One Life back in our element. So here's to hoping everything goes smoothly. And just like that, it's happening. We are on the move. So we're moving the mattress so that we can check the rudder post once we're in the water. And 
We're opening all of the areas where there are through holes. All right, so they're going to transfer us from the skateboard to, into the big travel lift. So they're gonna um, fasten the slings underneath us. And then we're headed, headed right there to the water. After three months of hard work in the boatyard, we're, we're this, almost there. <laughs> I don't want to get too confident. This feels pretty crazy. It feels really crazy. I can't believe that we're moving. Oh my gosh. We're almost sailors again. Oh, well, we're still on land. <laughs> Fingers crossed, no leaks and everything goes good, and the engine starts and the rudder doesn't fall off the bottom of the boat. Ah! <laughs> so here it is the moment we've all been waiting for. And everything moves so fast, but then when it actually happens, it's really, really slow. I've got a light if you want to check some too. I didn't see any water. I thought it looked fine. Yeah, I don't see anything. Okay, so we're in Gary in the water and they've been down below for a few minutes and we're all just standing around joking how suspenseful it is. It is. There you go. We're not sinking. Woohoo! <laughs> Hey, you're driving the boat! <laughs> Woohoo! I'm not sure. I was unsure if I'd remember how. You want me to spin it around? You want me to slow down and go in? So we checked all the through holes, didn't see any leaks, opened them all up, and the motor fired right up. Everything seems to be okay. So we're just motoring back and forth here in the harbor a little bit just to make sure everything's good, and then we're gonna pull into the slip right here at the marina. Our friends are walking down to catch our lines, and wow. <laughs> Let's go sail. Marquesas, Marquesas, Marquesas. All right, now that we're back in the water, we can test a bunch of the systems. So I'm going to fire up the generator, which hasn't been running quite a while, and see if it starts and see what problems we have. I'm actually going to take the covers off of it right now, just so we can see it when it's running and make sure it's not spraying water or fuel or cool it anywhere. Ready? Ready. Set? Set. Will it work? Fingers crossed! Whoa! Looks good. Yeah? Yep. Generator, check. Generator, check. We haven't flushed our head in six months, and I'm guessing what comes out of this hose is not going to be pleasant, but let's give it a go. Turn it to flush so we can pull water in, and here we are. Yeah. 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 And it smells like it That is not. Perfect. That's just old water. <laughs> Cooper's ready. Yeah. Next. Don't poop in the harbor. Don't poop in the harbor. Well, so far our only hiccup is our temperature gauge on the engine. So you're feeling good? Pretty good. Pretty good. Take that. If that's it, we haven't gone through everything yet, but... I feel great. If that's the only thing that's wrong, it'll be great. If that and like one or two other minor things is wrong, great. But we haven't tested everything yet. Can we relax? Mm -hmm. When do we get to relax? When we're sailing. <laughs> All right, up next, we're checking the new forward and salon aircon unit. Let's fire it up and see if it works. So that is air conditioner one. Power on. Fan auto, cooling, temperature, 65. Maybe I just have to wait. 
How long do we have to wait? Oh, oh, I hear it. All right, All right leaks. Oh, look no. at all the dust coming off. Oh, all no. the fiberglass dust coming ah, out of the vent. Ah, that's disgusting. <laughs> Ew. We have good water flow. We have water flow? Yes. Woohoo. Feel the air over here. Any leaks? I feel it from here. One back there. This one's fine. Looks good. Looks good. Yeah, I don't see any leaks at the two hose connections there. So now that we've checked all of the critical things, for now anyway, we feel safe enough to walk back over to the boatyard and get our car. Yeah, we're sure we're not sinking. So we can leave it for a little <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, it feels so good to be back on the water. Last time we walked up this ramp, we had just said goodbye to Delos. Now it's time to go chase him down. <laughs> Coming for you, Delos. <laughs> you get there is hope. Woo! <laughs> Our area looks so weird without one life in it. This is where we lived for months. <laughs> Three months. In this little spot of right gravel here. in this dusty little boatyard. After a roller coaster of an emotional day, it was time to celebrate our milestone with a few margaritas and our closest boatyard friends who were so supportive and motivating during our refit. We're back on the water. It feels so good. We've got a lot of work to do still, but the boat's floating, we're not sinking, and we're almost ready. Yeah, yesterday about uh, 5 p.m., 6 p.m. our time, we tied up here to the dock that's right near the boatyard launch. Um, we really lucked out finding a slip and not having to just sail on out of here because the next anchorage is about a uh, hundred miles away, so it's an overnight sail. So we'll be here for the next few days just testing our systems, making sure our water maker still works. We're also waiting for our life raft to be delivered. It's supposed to be here on Thursday. Anyway, it feels amazing to be back on the water. It, it finally feels like we're home. <laughs> we're home. Thanks for all the support over the past few months. It's been a real challenging time for us to get back to the water, but we're feeling good now. Yeah, we made it. One might assume that the work to prepare for our Pacific Ocean crossing was now behind us, but the preparations were just beginning. This is actually a perfect situation for us to provision because we need a lot of stuff in bulk and Sam's Club is probably the best place to do it. So luckily there's one here in Puerto Penasco and we're gonna go load up. More cookies. More cookies. Just whatever you've got, get more cookies. cookies. <laughs> I have been provisioning One Life for the past three years, and I have my list pretty dialed in. My plan was to stock as much as I could while here in Penasco, and do another round one more time before we left La Paz at the most southern end of the Sea of Cortez. We just got back to the boat with our first load of provisioning stuff, and we had to say goodbye to our friend Grace. Some of you may recognize Grace from Calico Sky Sailing. It is hard to summarize our friendship in words, but over the past couple years, her and her husband, Bill, have been a huge part of our lives. We had to say goodbye to her a bit sooner than we wanted, as she had some health issues to battle. Knowing we would not be there for her physically during this time made our see you later a bit tough. Grace, if you're watching this, we love you and we're so proud of you and we can't wait for the day we can buddy boat together once again. Oh, I'm really sucks having to say goodbye to our friends. It's a see you later. Yeah. It's always a see you later. I, it's part of it. It's one of the toughest things about this lifestyle is we're always making friends and we're leaving. So anyway, back to provisioning. <laughs> More work to do. <laughs> Great, so this is the first round of stuff. And I'm actually headed back to Sam's Club now to do cheese and meat run. Um, I wanted to bring all of this back first and deal with it, get it all loaded on the boat. But yeah, I have no idea where all this stuff is going to go. This is just like a quarter of the food so far. It's going to go somewhere. <laughs>
Yes, yeah, Gary. Are you done provisioning yet? Can we go sailing? <laughs> I don't know why it's taking so long. It's just food for like a couple days, right? Couple days, yeah. That's it. Mm. <laughs> You're getting into our the provisions aren't going to last long. <laughs> What'd you find? You better double up on Snickers. <laughs> they might all be gone by the time you get back. Provisioning round two. My first stop is the bodega, and it is actually Mexico's version of Walmart. And I'm going here just for some miscellaneous items that I don't really need in bulk or things I wouldn't find at Sam's. So it's Sam's Club round two, though I just found these giant slabs of meat and it says that they'll repackage it at no cost. Um, so I asked if they can slice it into sections for me and she said that she can, but I have to pay for it first. Um, anyway, my Spanish is lacking, but I think that's what she said. So I'm going to give it a try. <laughs> ah, gracias. Perfecto. <laughs> Whew. It's been a long day already. And I still have to put all this stuff away. The actual shopping part is easy. It's the vacuum sealing, labeling, and storing that takes the majority of the time. That is meat around one. There's more. Buying meat and cheese in bulk and sectioning it into smaller portions seems to work best for us. We are fortunate to have both a fridge and freezer on board, so we can pack quite a bit of food on our small boat. I showered for the night. I've had enough uh, provisioning for one day, so I'm gonna pick this back up tomorrow. Good morning. This morning I'm gonna finish putting away all of our provisions. Last night after I got the meat and cheese put away, I was pretty tired, so I gave up on putting away everything else. But we have a pretty big day today, so I'm gonna get busy. I took all the labels off the cans to avoid any bug infestations and relabeled them. When putting the items away, I entered how many we had on board and where they were stored on my provisioning spreadsheet. Keeping this spreadsheet up to date is helpful because it keeps track of where things are, alerts me when items get low, and tells me what items I need to still shop for. I'm gonna put the pasta away now and bay leaves do a really great job of keeping parasites and stuff away. Um, so I put a bay leaf in pretty much any grain that we have, um, our flour, our rice, all of our pastas. And so far we've not really had any problems with weevils or anything. So I don't know if it works or not, but I'm gonna keep doing it since we've not had any problems. <laughs> All right, well, I got most of our provisioning stuff put away, but we have a really exciting day ahead. And we have two of our viewers who drove down from Phoenix and they're bringing us a special delivery. So this is what our boat looks like now. You can see I got most of the stuff put away, but there's still stuff in the cockpit. Um. I was really hoping to have it put away before they came so that we wouldn't look like such slobs, but that's okay. I'm a Dari two in life. Cool. Raul and Justine, they just got here. Life raft. Roel and Justine both work in the medical field and they graciously supplied us with an entire IV kit. Raul gave us an invaluable crash course in IV administration. So when it gets full of blood, 
So you just stop introducing the catheter because if you keep going, you're gonna go to the other side. Okay. Once we felt confident, we administered saline IVs to each other. For our first time, everything went pretty smoothly. Well, there may have been a couple oopsies. Yeah. <laughs> safe trip, safe trip. Okay. Bye. Well, that was absolutely amazing. Some of the kindest people that we've ever met. They took the time to come down here from Phoenix today, bring us an amazing kit for giving IV medications and fluids and taught us how to do it. So that could be potentially life-saving for us one day. And that's a huge gift. So big thank you to Raul and Justine. Yes, thanks guys, you're awesome. We hope to never have to use what you taught us, <laughs> but we really are thankful for all the knowledge you shared with us. And we hope to see you guys out here on the water one day. Well, now it's step two of what can save our life, which is our new life raft. And we don't even know how to use this thing. So we went with the Wave Racer by Superior Life Saving. And it's a four person in a bag. I guess we should read the instructions. But since we're going to be doing an ocean crossing and there was just a boat, 44 foot Kelly Peterson that actually hit a whale and sunk in about 15 minutes doing the crossing. So that kind of shook us a little and made us realize we probably should have one on board for doing an ocean crossing. They survived and had a life raft and did just fine. So hopefully we never have to use this, but we'll have it if we do. Our days in Puerto Penasco were quickly coming to a close, and we had a couple more goodbye hugs to give to Bill from Calco Skies and our new friend Demetrius, who helped us in the yard and is setting off on his own sailing journey. Adios. Adios, amigos. Bye. Oh, more goodbyes. They never get any easier. <laughs> But we have another full day today because today is hopefully our last day with the car. <laughs> um, we have a friend that's supposed to come by the car this afternoon. So we're gonna finish up our provisioning, hit the pharmacy because after yesterday, we want to grab a few more things for our med kit. We need to jerry diesel cans. Um, there is not a fuel dock here in Puerto Penasco and we are on empty. So we have to jerry probably I don't know, like 75 gallons of diesel here to the boat today. Gary says we have to move fast today. Yeah, it's already 10.30. We need to go to a gas station about three times and back to the boat to empty them, which takes about 20 minutes to empty them each time. We need to go to the pharmacy. We need to go to the grocery store. We need to go to the bodega. What else? We need to go to the bank. Fresh fruits, veggies, and eggs are always the last things we provision. We then hit the pharmacy to get a few more items to add to our med kit. I headed back to the boat to scrub our newly acquired items. Separating potatoes and onions is important because onions produce a high level of ethylene gas, which will cause potatoes to go bad. All other fruits and veggies are stored in these hammocks, so our valuable fridge space can be utilized for meat and dairy products. I'm on jerry can run number two, trying to fill up these guys, we only have three for diesel and we need to make quite a few trips. So I pulled into the gas station that we just got diesel from. And now it's roped off and they're painting it. So it's closed. So I need to drive and find another place to get diesel. Hopefully somewhere else is open. Brooke had a hard time the other day when she went to get a couple filled up. So we'll see what I can find. So I found another gas station not too far away, got 15 more gallons. Our tank holds 80 gallons and it was pretty much empty. I've put in 10 gallons 
yesterday, 15 gallons today, so that's 25 plus the 15 I have here. That should get us to about half full. So we probably need to do two more runs to get this complete. And the fueling process continues. This literally can take all day. I mean, it's 80 gallons in five gallon jugs and I can only get three at a time. And I've got to carry them up this ramp, put them in the car, drive 10 minutes, wait for the service station to fill them up. It's a long process. In between the fuel process, I emptied out our car, took it to the car wash and cleaned it up to get it ready for its new owners. Buying a car for a road trip and to have it here in Mexico during our refit was extremely beneficial. And as it turned out, selling it would be quite easy. In fact, we were able to keep it one extra day for last minute errands. Okay, well, as the sun goes down, I'm finally done with the fueling mission. Our tank is full and we've got two jerry cans of diesel to store on deck. That should be sufficient to get us down to La Paz where we will fuel up the pirate ships coming in. Every night, this ridiculous pirate ship takes tourists out of the harbor here and they cruise around and get really drunk and then they come back and dock next to us blasting music. It's pretty entertaining, actually. I would like to do it, but we're kind of pirates ourselves, so we don't need the pirate ship. So what do we do when we have a car for one last night? We make one final trip out for delicious Mexican street food. So these are called churros, and it's basically a fried dough stick coated in sugar. And then we got these coated in chocolate syrup too, and they're ridiculously good. It's by far my favorite snack in Mexico. Yum. Not gonna find these in the Marquesas. <laughs> well, dessert was really good. <laughs> But we had to make one more stop at our favorite taco stand here in Puerto Penasco. It's called El Patota, and he's only set up on the weekends mostly. Yeah, and he has the best El Pastor tacos that we've found. So, yeah, we just had dessert, but let's go have a taco. Why not? <laughs> This might be your last Puerto Penasco taco. Probably not your last Mexican taco. We just did a little happy wiggle because the taco is so good. <laughs> so we're gonna go chow down on these tacos and we'll catch you guys tomorrow. It had been six months since One Life had sails up. We pulled our staysail out of storage, attached it to the furler, hoisted it up, and furled it. With the staysail ready to go, we pulled out our Genoa, but not the same Genoa that we sailed in with. A brand new crisp Genoa from Precision Sails. We are so excited to show it off but you'll have to wait until next time to see it in action. Voila, 
when life was officially a sailboat again. One last thing. Well, not one last thing. We still have several things to do. <laughs> our friend Dane is coming to buy our Honda Element, which will oh. free us from owning a vehicle other than a boat. Let us get sailing again. So I'm not actually sad about it because it means we can sail again. Yeah, I'm not sad about it, but it was a good car for it's us. It's a great car. We had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. As our Honda Element pulled away, our land life rolled away with it. Tomorrow morning, we start the next chapter of our sailing journey. First, sail out of the Sea of Cortez, and then west across the Pacific Ocean.